Welcome to the podcast about investing in startups, where existing investors can learn how to get the best deal possible. And those that have never before invested in startups can learn the keys to success from the venture experts. Your host is Nick Moran, and this is The Full Ratchet. Welcome back to The Full Ratchet. On today's special segment of Investor Stories, the investors address trends, sectors, and markets that they think are positioned for outsized returns in the future. This is the segment called What's Next? On today's special segment, we have Ryan Gembala of Pathbreaker. Ryan, can you talk about sectors or trends that you're bullish on? Yeah, very bullish on applied robotics and artificial intelligence across really every sector. One sector in particular that I think is exciting is the value chain of food. Food in the US is a $2 trillion market alone. Restaurants are $500 billion in the US. And most of the touch points in this system of food still rely on legacy systems, a lot of people, uh, a lot of distance, highly fragmented geographies, and very little data. So we're, we've made investments in a, companies like Apprente that was acquired by McDonald's, yep. Synthy Robotics, which is generating shelf-level inventory through autonomous robotics, a company that's bringing automation to aquaculture, Ono Food Company, which is building autonomous mobile restaurants, modular restaurants that generate and deliver delicious, healthy blends and smooth cutting out you know, labor and largely cutting out labor and real estate costs. So that's an area we'll, we'll continue to be very active in. On today's special segment, we have Jenny Rook of Genoa Ventures. Jenny, I typically ask guests to talk about sectors and trends they're bullish on. I was I was hoping you might be able to pick a specific area within life sciences that you're really excited about and 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 tell us more about it. It's it's hard to be more specific than our our thesis is basically our entire raison and that for general adventures is because we are bullish on the trend of technology and biology coming together, blending, intermingling, and what that does for for innovation. I'll I'll pick out a specific thread though, which is maybe less less obvious because it's not about the technologies themselves, but it's about the people. I really love to see, and I think we're seeing more and more individuals who began in one field and shifted to another. And so embody in themselves this chimeric nature of different disciplines coming together. You know, our, for example, our company IonPath, the founder was originally an electrical engineer, became a pathologist. Uh, so when he needed a new tool for pathology, he had the skills to go develop it. I think that's really exciting as we see more interdisciplinary education, as we see educational paths being less rigid, and as we see experiential paths as well being you know, less about having the same job for 40 years and more where really motivated talent might move from company to company and pick up different exposure to different markets or different technologies. I think that's super exciting and it is going to be the generation of more and more interesting cross-sectional innovation. On today's special segment, we have Jeff Clavier of Uncork Capital. Jeff, can you talk about sectors or trends that you're bullish on? Well, based on what we've been seeing and doing over the past few years, we're actually super excited about enterprise software, SaaS, developer tools as a category. It's very hard to get to multi-billion dollar outcomes uh, like uh, SendGrid or Twilio, but it's definitely feasible because your ability to aggregate, you know, sort of the functionality that is needed by given sort of either industrial sector or given infrastructure layer is real. And it starts small and ambitious and you're never sure that, you know, you can scale. And to be honest, when I invested in Sandgrid, I was like, I can see a $10 million ish company in terms of revenue, but not sure about hundred and they scaled quite nicely. 
we are looking at all those pieces of infrastructure and and vertical SaaS opportunities with great interest because we think that there is uh, massive opportunities. And, you know, I'm personally quite fond of the the few sort of companies we've um, invested in on the um, frontier tech side. So super risky kind of, you know, market adoption, pretty unknown. The issue with those is you're never sure whether you're going to be too early or way too early because if you're (laughs) way too early, you're dead. But things like Loft Orbital, which is bringing the concept of AWS to space, making wow. it possible for you to essentially fly a mission for a subset of the cost because you're going to share it with other customers and put your sensor up on a satellite and you're going to get the bird up there with a the launcher and we're going to sort of manage everything for you so that at the end of the day, space for you look, looks like, like a data stream is just a fascinating opportunity. Space so, as a service, huh? Space the, as a service. The new yeah. SaaS. <laughs> and so it's it's super risky because it can blow up by definition in space, but it's super fascinating. So I'm, I'm glad that our LPs have given us, you know, the opportunity to invest in those kinds of companies. We won't do that too many times because it's super risky. But if we can sort of build the right balance between the SaaS marketplaces, a bit of consumer, a bit of hardware companies, and then have this part of the portfolio, which is a bit more risky and ambitious, I think will we'll sort of do well. On today's special segment, we have Courtney Ream of M13. Courtney, can you talk about sectors or trends that you're bullish on? Sure. You know, I think consciousness as a, as a sector is still just huge. It's a little, sounds a little vague and nebulous, but I, I just think so many more people are thinking about things holistically. And so I, I think, you know, there's even an element of like mental health with consciousness. I mean, I think all that stuff is just going to be huge. These things that are maybe once were considered a little fringe or a little touchy feely are, are all coming to the forefront. You know, we're making huge investments in, in data and AI. I think those terms can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. But as I said, even if it's just kind of machine learning for things like conversational and community meets commerce, I think that's going to be a huge trend. I mean, the U.S. is still very different than most other big countries. If you use WeChat in Asia, you know, they're, you're booking your travel off it. You're giving payment details. They're doing many more things on that platform than we do on any, any one platform here in the U.S. So I think that'll continue to change. And, you know, we, I like, as I said, our, our goal is to really affect consumer behavior for the next decade. So I do think some of these businesses that you see out there, not to pick on a, on a, something like a Postmates, but I just think, you know, whether it's successful or not, and I, I'm a little skeptical of how it will do if it goes public, those are businesses that are, I don't even think that's for the 1%. That's for the one-tenth of 1%. And I think we're interested in businesses that could have a, a, a big global impact on a lot of people. Not, you know, I, I want to find businesses that maybe don't start with the 99%, but are, are viable in short order for the 99%. Because I do think certain things have started to come out are just for the 1%. And that's not actually healthy for society, you know, at large. Because I think you're seeing more dissension between the haves and the have nots and everything else. But if we can use consumer technology as a force for good, I think it'll it'll do good things for just kind of the discourse and general sentiment of society. And so one of the big trends we see is that I think technology technology used to be considered a category. Like when I was at Goldman Sachs, there was different different groups. I was in consumer, there's a healthcare group, there's a technology group, a media group. Yep. Now I would argue that technology is being thought of as a disruptor, even though I hate that term, but it's an overlay on all sectors. And I actually think what we're really starting to see, and it's why we're excited about our place in the world, is the consumerization of everything. You know, we're getting asked to be in healthcare deals or looking at industries that I never would have touched, but it's because they all, you know, the consumer is starting to be an overlay on on all these categories. And so, you know, it doesn't always have to be B to C, it can be B to B to C, but whatever it is, we're seeing that. And so I think we're hopefully going to be very much in the right place, right time to take advantage of that. That will conclude this installment of Investor Stories. If you're enjoying the program and would like to see it continue, take a moment and leave a five-star review in iTunes. Also, if you'd like updates on new content from TFR, as well as the top 10 VC articles every week, go to fullratchet.net 
and sign up for the newsletter. Okay, that will wrap things up for today. Until next time, over-prepare, choose carefully, and invest confidently. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.